Hi everybody and welcome to the Leaving Cert edition of Acid-Base Theory. So today we're going to look at acid-base definitions. We're going to look at Arrhenius theory, the older definition, and the bronsted lowry theory, the more modern definition of acids and bases. So Arrhenius defined an acid as a substance that produces H plus or hydrogen ions, also known as protons, when dissolved in an aqueous solution. As you can see from the first equation here, I have HCl, which is hydrochloric acid. I have it dissolved in water, H2O, it goes on to produce H plus, which are the hydrogen ions, the chloride ions in water. Arrhenius then defined a base as a substance that produces OH minus ions or hydroxide ions when dissolved in aqueous solution, aqueous solution being water based. In this case, I have NaOH, which is sodium hydroxide, in water to produce sodium ions, which is Na+, and hydroxide ions, which is OH- in the water. So the strength of an acid or a base depends on the concentration of the ions, so the number of ions that are present in solution. Neutralization of an acid and base involves a reaction between those hydrogen ions and the hydroxide ions, which will come together then to form water, as you can see in this equation here below. Here I have my hydroxide, my hydrogen ions and my hydroxide ions coming together to form water. And hence the acid and the base have been. But there are a number of problems with Arrhenius theory. The first was that the concept was actually quite limited. The hydrogen ions have a very small radius of 10 to the minus 13 centimeters. So this is quite a concentrated charge. And as a result, you wouldn't typically find a H plus ion floating around in solution. It would quickly latch on to another water molecule forming what is known as a hydronium ion, or H3O+. So here I can show you how that happens. I have my H+, which is my hydrogen ion. It will react with the water, H2O, to form what we call a hydronium ion, H3O+. Uh, additional difficulties with the Arrhenius concept is that it is based solely on aqueous acid-based systems, so just water-based systems. Acids and basic properties are observed for substances existing in solvents other than water. And an example of this would be NH3, this being ammonia, NH3 for ammonia. It is possible to have an acid-base reaction without hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions being produced in water. And to give you an example here, I have ammonia, NH3, with hydrochloric acid, HCl, going on to produce ammonium, NH4+, and a chloride ion, Cl-. bronsted lowry then built on Arrhenius theory. An acid he defined as a substance that can donate a proton, or a H+, or a hydrogen ion, depending on what you want to call it. They all mean the same thing. A base is defined as any substance that can accept a proton from another substance. Strong acids find it easy to donate hydrogen ions, while weak ones find it more difficult. And the same can be said for bases. So strong bases will find it easy to accept a proton, and the weaker ones will not. In bronsted lowry then, we will have sometimes an acid and base will react to form another acid and base. And this second acid-base pair is going to be called a conjugate acid and base. So let's have a look and see what that is. So the ionization of a bronsted lowry acid and base can be considered an equilibrium reaction okay, between two acid-base pairs. So an acid and base forming a second acid and base. So there's a forward reaction where it goes one way and a back reaction also. So if we have a look at this first example here where I have hydrofluoric acid, HF, and water, goes on to produce our hydronium ion, and our fluoride ion. Remember, in some books, um, it seems to be acceptable to say H+, plus, but it is more correct to say H3O+. Plus. So if you have a look, then the HF has split into H+, plus and F-. minus. The H+, plus then has reacted to form our H3O+, plus, our hydronium ion. So I have a hydronium ion and my fluoride ion. Here, if I look at the reverse reaction, I start with the hydronium ion, and I have my fluoride ion going on to produce my hydrofluoric acid and my water. So I can write the two of these reactions together into one using these arrows. These are known as equilibrium arrows, indicating that it can go one direction. It can also go in the reverse direction. So how do we define a conjugate acid and a conjugate base? So these are the second acid-base pairs that result from the reaction of the first acid and base. 
So a conjugate acid is defined as a base after it has accepted a proton, and a conjugate base is defined as an acid after it has donated. So let's have a look at this. So back to our first example. I had my hydrofluoric acid, and I have my water going on to produce my hydronium ion and my fluoride ion. So here I have my HF, and I look at its pair over here. So HF then turns into F minus. So I have my acid. The acid becomes a conjugate base after it donates its proton. The base, which I can see here, has accepted the proton. So a base becomes the conjugate acid after it has accepted the proton. So conjugate acid-base pairs can be found for substances exhibiting acidic and basic properties in other solvents as well. Again, it doesn't have to be water-based. In this case, I have my hydrofluoric acid with ammonia, and again, I form ammonium and a fluoride ion. So just to give you a general equation, here I have HA. HA, in this instance, represents an acid, like HCl, HBr, nitric acid, for example. OK, so this represents the acid and then I have it in a water based solution. So my H2O, that acid will dissociate then to form my hydronium ion and then my resulting ion, such as a Cl minus or an F minus, for example. So I have my acid. If that's an acid, then the water will act as a base to form the conjugate acid, remember, which is a base after it accepts the, the, the hydrogen ion, and I have my conjugate base, which is a result of the acid after it has donated the proton. So it's an equilibrium reaction. Remember, that's what these arrows indicate, that the reaction can go forward or it can go backwards. So there's always going to be competition for the proton or the H plus ion that is going to be released from the acid. You know, the bases are going to compete for it. There's two bases here, the H2O and also the A- representing the bases. The stronger base will always control the direction in which the reaction is going. In this case, it is the H2O, which is the stronger base, so it will control the reaction, and hence the reaction will go in the direction of the right. Just to make you aware, there are monoprotic and also polyprotic acids. What does this mean? Monoprotic means it has one proton to give away. Polyprotic means it will have more than one proton that it can donate or give away. If we have a look at our HCl, there's only one proton there that it can give away, and it will form then as a result our H3O plus and our Cl minus ion. So that's considered monoprotic, mono meaning one. Something that's polyprotic would be sulfuric acid, H2SO4. It has two acidic protons that it can give away. And as we can see here, it can react with two amounts of water, forming two hydronium ions and leaving a sulfate ion. You need to remember as well, just because something has a lot of hydrogens in it, it doesn't mean all of them will be donated. And this is what we mean when we say something is an acidic or a non-acidic hydrogen. So let's have a look at examples of those. So common monoprotic acids, you would probably recognize these as your bench acids, something like you know, uh, HCl, HBr, HNO3, this being your hydrochloric acid, your hydrobromic acid, and your nitric acid. We also have a look at these ones. In the case of these are called oxoacids, when a hydrogen is attached to an oxygen. So if I have a look at this one here, this is known as ethanoic acid or acetic acid. This here is our sulfuric acid and this here is our nitric acid. Here, this is monoprotic. There's only one hydrogen here that it could give away. We know this one is polyprotic. There are two that it can give away, but let's have a look at this one here. I have three hydrogens here plus a hydrogen here, meaning there are four hydrogens there in total. Are all of those hydrogens considered acidic hydrogens. In other words, can they be given away to form an acid? The answer is no. It is only the hydrogen that is attached to the oxygen that is considered an acidic proton. These ones here attached to the carbon are not considered acidic hydrogens. They will not be easily donated. The reason being is if you go back to your covalent bonding. 
So if you had a look at bonding, we had two types of bonding, ionic and covalent. If we have a look at a covalent, which is the sharing of electrons. Within covalent bonding, you had something called polar and nonpolar. Polar was the equal sharing of electrons. Nonpolar was the unequal sharing of electrons. We know that oxygen is highly electronegative. So it will tend to pull the electrons more towards itself. As a result, oxygen becomes very negative and hydrogen will become quite positive. So there is a lot of unequal sharing between the hydrogen and the oxygen. So hydrogen becomes very, very positive, and the more positive hydrogen is, the more easily it will be donated. In the case of the carbon-hydrogen bond, there is much more equal sharing between the carbon and the hydrogen. Therefore, the polarity existing between the hydrogen and the carbon is not that strong. As a result, the carbon and hydrogen uh, will hold on to the electrons much more strongly, and the hydrogen is not as positive when bonded to the carbon compared to when it's bonded to the oxygen. If we have a look here at our sulfuric acid, we can see that the hydrogens in both cases are both attached to oxygens and therefore will form acidic hydrogens. These hydrogens will be highly positive and will want to donate to form our acidic solution. The same with the nitric acid, you can see also there, it's also bonded to the oxygen, making it an acidic hydrogen. So just to recap on that, in the sulfuric acid, both hydrogens are bonded to an oxygen. In the terms of the ethanoic acid or the acetic acid, only one hydrogen is bonded to an oxygen. All others are bonded to the carbon. So remember, the electronegativity of the oxygen is what makes the hydrogen bonded to it very polar, very positive. And polar molecules will ionize in water to give and the properties that we desire. So from this lesson, what you need to know is your definition of an arrhenius acid and the bronsillary acid. You also need to be able to define what a conjugate acid and a conjugate base is. Yeah, to know what's monoprotic and what polyprotic acids are. And in the next lesson, we're going to look at the pH scale and have a look at some calculations on that.